Hey guys, welcome to Floaty Tattoo Studio. I promised you I'd do a tutorial on my autoclave, the classic prestige. It's available on Amazon. So without further ado, let's do a tutorial on how to clean it, how to maintain it, and how to do your spore test. First things first, I'm gonna show you how to sterilize your grip. Here is my station. So I have my grip right here from my machine. This is my Bishop grip. It is a still grip and fully autoclavable. So because we are in Wisconsin, we have an extra rule um, in order to clean our grips properly because of the high amount of agriculture in Wisconsin, we do have more prions. So we have to run it through this enzymatic cleaner before we put it into the autoclave. I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. It's really no big deal, but it does also involve this ultrasonic machine here. Okay, here's my Bishop grip. I'm just gonna put it into a plastic cup here. I'm gonna go sideways so I don't have to cover it quite as much. There we go. And here's my enzymatic cleaner. As you can see, I've just bought one here from Amazon. It is a multi-purpose, pretty uh, general commercial cleaner here. So if you want a link for that, you'll find it in the description below as well. So we're just going to make sure that grip is covered. You wanna pour really slowly. This is a high level disinfectant. All right, so you wanna make sure that enzymatic cleaner is fully covering the grip. As you can see, it is completely submerged. Okay, we're gonna come over here to the ultrasonic machine. It runs at 180 seconds. This just reads 180 if you can't read that. Um, I'm gonna take the top off here and I'm gonna end up leaving it off because it's a little too small with it on. Inside of the ultrasound, uh, ultrasonic cleaner, you'll see some liquid here. Uh, this is not just water. It's also mixed with the solution called Alkanox. That is something that keeps the ultrasonic uh, cleaner clean. So if you want to find that, we'll also have a link in the description below. Okay, so I'm just gonna place this enzymatic cleaner with the grip right on there and I'm going to just start the machine, it's that simple. It's pretty loud, here we go. Okay, sounds like it's all done. So carefully, I'm going to grab this and take it back out here, going over to my sink area and I'm just gonna drain that out. I'm gonna use a little distilled water here to clean the grip. Remember, this is a pre uh, pre clean. I'm just gonna do it one more time. I see some more solution there. Okay, so now we have completed a pre-clean of this grip using the enzymatic cleaner and the ultrasonic. So at this point, we want to bag it up and put it in the machine. Let me show you the bags. Okay, you'll find a lot of different sterilization pouches on Amazon. Uh, this particular size for us did work for our steel grip. Um, so there that is, we'll also include that link in the description. I'm just gonna take out my pre-cleaned grip and I'm gonna open up this pouch. Be a little tricky to get open. Okay, we got the grip in the pouch. Nice and snug. We're just gonna seal the pouch.
All right, and it has an expiration date for the pouch here and an option here to write in your sterilization date as well. Let's see what's going on inside my autoclave. All right, it looks like the autoclave needs some water. It's empty, so you just wanna make sure that the water line is filled before you start. If you look closely, you'll see the water line here. All right, I'm just gonna fill up my autoclave to that line. This is distilled water. Okay, more or less at that line. I'm going to return my basket. And lastly, I'm gonna put in my grip. Remember, this is a giant crock pot, so you wanna make sure it's sealed properly. You'll see arrows at the top here. Here's an arrow on the left and an arrow here. You wanna match those up and then turn the handles so everything aligns linearly. Give it a little tug just to make sure it's all secure. So now it's closed and very, very easily to start this, we just press one button on. Ta-da! All right, we're gonna give this about an hour and we'll be right back. One hour later. Okay, time's up and our autoclave has finished its cycle. Let's take a look. I'm gonna show you how to open it. You'll notice that when it's closed, again, these align. The best way to open this without any kind of accidental spillage or issues is just to, with your fingers, just kind of sliding the two sides apart like so. So you kind of push off of each other. You use leverage to get that to turn. Okay, it's opened up and you'll see there's excess fluid. That's just fine, um, that's normal. We'll see the clean grip inside. It's very hot. And now we'll just let that dry out. I usually just toss it into a clean container and just so it's out of the elements. To maintain this autoclave, you're gonna wanna clean it at least once a month or more, um, but I'm gonna do it right now after this cycle to show you guys how to do it. So first things first, just open it up and we wanna make sure that there's enough water left over from our last cycle. You can see that some of the water has gone out, but not much. I'm just gonna get this up a little more so it's at the fill line. Okay, we're gonna take our Chamber Bright next for our maintenance. We are gonna use Chamber Bright to keep our autoclave clean. As you can see, it keeps it clean here. That's why we use it. it keeps the chamber reservoir all internal tubing clean. So it has to actually run through the machine. So let's do that now. You can see they're just single packets and there's directions right on the packet if you want to find them and you don't have this, that's okay. They're right here on the packet. Pretty easy, you just put the basket back in. Open up the chamber bright. Pour it in and reclose the top. One more step. Start it. One hour later. Okay, the cycle is complete and uh, it's been clean. So let's take a look. Ooh, super steamy. Okay, I'm just gonna put this to the side. And um, because it, the basket out here too. Because it is plugged in, I'm gonna have to unplug it to dump out this water. You're gonna wanna dump out the water after you do uh, the pouch cleaner. Careful, it's hot.
Okay, and get some more distilled water. Get us back to the water line. Okay, I got to plug back in. So at this point, be a good time to show you how to do a spore test. Now a spore test is to be done once a month. Um, no exceptions, not like with cleaning your machine. With cleaning the autoclave, you can do that once a month, or if you use it more regularly, you might want to do it once a week. Um, because we are not super busy yet, once a month seems fine. Uh, but when it comes to the spore test, you must do it once a month and submit it uh, before the end of the month. We do ours on the same day and submit on the same day so that we remember it's in our calendar and we make sure to do that. Um, so you want to check with your county as well and see what their spore test recommendations are. We ended up buying our own spore tests from Amazon. Let me go get them. We ended up with Confirm. Confirm was in our list of FDA approved spore tests. So as you can see, if you look on the packaging, Confirm uses Crostex as their um, medical company for spore testing. So whatever you end up with, you're just gonna end up with that company. Crostex has been good to us so far. We have had um, a good experience. Once we sent in our initial spore test, they, um, and filled out some things online. They sent back stickers that made it easier to fill out um, our spore tests. So these are what they look like, basically just a mailer here with the test information. Our stickers go uh, onto here so that we don't have to fill it out every time all this required information. So we've had a very good experience with Crostex. Again, I do recommend these uh, and you can find them on Amazon, find a link in the description below. All right, it's time to do a spore test. So let's take out the actual spore test inside this envelope. And there it is, the spore test. There's one indicator test strip. So all we're gonna do is just put that right inside the autoclave. So spore test is in and we're just gonna run a cycle. So again, that's gonna take, you know, 20 minutes to an hour, just depends on how hot it is. Um, and once that's done, we want that closed. Uh, once that's done, uh, then we can pull the spore test out and we can mail it off to the Crostex company. So all in all, using the autoclave is no big deal. Once you know how to do it, where to get everything and how to just keep it safe and clean. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Remember, all those links are in the description below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye. Thank you. Bye.